Hello, hello. Welcome to Parenting Differently, where we leave behind the old way of parenting and allow the gifts of parenthood to raise us. Maybe different to how we were raised, different to how we uh, society is telling us to raise our kids, maybe even different to how we expected we would be raising our kids, just different. I'm your host, Anya Simmons, so welcome, welcome. I'm a mom of two big people. I am a yogi and a parenting coach. And I came to nannying as a pretty strict British nanny. I came to motherhood, I should say, as a pretty strict British nanny. And it didn't work. <laughs> and I faltered along the way when I realized how much of a journey it was for me that we were being raised together. I'm super excited for my guest today, Mr. Nick North. I have been stalking him a little while on Instagram as I love his, your authenticness, your realness. Um, and I love that you have five kids. That sort of already gives you that ticket in parenting that you, you kind of know what's going on and you know how to work this. Mm -hmm. So uh, a brand strategist, now a chicken farmer. It's all of it, all of it. So welcome, welcome, Nick. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm so super jazzed to be here. Wonderful, wonderful. Parenting so many creatures. <laughs> furry, feathered, skinned. Oh, yeah. Perfect, yeah. perfect. Awesome. So let's start with the first question. Ask everybody, mm -hmm. who are you and who are you parenting? I am Nick, Nick North, uh, and I am parenting five kids from the ages of six to 14. Uh, so ugh. <laughs> it's, it's the whole gamut going to say yeah you're right in yeah. teenagehood and mm -hmm. in little ones yeah and then unlike most uh dads of five i happen to have birthed four of them so that makes a, me a little bit more interesting than your your everyday non-birthing dad <laughs> a few extra points <laughs> yeah Psst. dads didn't even birth their kids what <laughs> no. great awesome Awesome, awesome. And um, how about what are you learning about yourself through your children? Uh, hmm, I think the biggest thing that I'm learning about myself through my kids is how enough I am already. Uh, because I look at all the ways that I don't believe that I am enough. And I look at my kids and I'm like, oh, all of my not enoughness comes from these things that I would absolutely say that they're enough for loving, right? And I I love them so much for absolutely no good reason at all. Um, and so if they are perfect, then damn it, it stands to reason that much to my chagrin, so am I. Yeah, yeah. And um, from your own childhood, you know, is there something um, that you really loved that you wanted to incorporate in your parenthood, in parenting, in fatherhood? No, not at all. Nothing. I, my whole like parenting uh, philosophy is like the opposite of what happened to me, I think. Yeah. more than anything I'm like oh no I didn't take any good lessons from them other than you don't do it that way okay okay I think that I took a lot of parenting lessons from my friends parents I mm -hmm. took a lot of parenting lessons from people that I respected and sort of looked up to mm -hmm. I took parenting lessons from coaches and from teachers and from um people like that in my life but I I didn't take them from my own family other than what I didn't want to do right okay doesn't mean that there weren't lessons there it mm -hmm. just means that there was so many other things happening that i wasn't able to see them amongst the other stuff right 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 yeah yeah isn't that deep right i'm like mm, look at me healing and not blaming my parents for everything <laughs> <laughs> there you go there you go right? some deep ish right there yeah no i that just kind of let me go yeah wow okay cool Really nice. Even I was like, wow, that was good. <laughs> yeah, I'm brilliant. I didn't even know <laughs> you that. You're back to the perfect. Look at that. Yeah, I'm like, oh, <laughs> that, 
just came to me in the moment. It's not really mine. It just came through, you know? <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Now, um, with five, how do you stay connected to each of them? Is there a, a plan in place or? Mm. Hmm. There is like a loose plan, you know? Mm -hmm. So we loosely try and make sure that once a month, <clears throat> each kid gets a solo date with each of us at some point. Mm -hmm. That solo date is often like, we're walking to the beach together <clears throat> with the dog. The solo date can be, I'm going to get groceries and do you want to be the one kid that gets to come with me? Because COVID times means that you, oh, yes. you don't bring kids places. Yeah. Um, and they're like, you need me to get out of the house. <laughs> right? Like, like who are yeah um and so it's it doesn't the dates don't necessarily have to be fancy you know we'll try and like we're getting groceries we'll get a treat but they get one of them gets to pick out at the grocery store or something mm -hmm. like that but it's never it doesn't uh i try really well we try really hard not to have to make it these elaborate extravagant things right. so that it it feels as though parenting has gotten into this like like keeping up with the Joneses, like oh, who gosh. can afford better experiences for their kids and the better schools for their kids and who can like take their kids on more vacations. And I am like, I don't really care about any of that. Like that's just, that's not what I want my kids to remember about mm -hmm. their childhood. Mm -hmm. I want them to remember going on walks in the forest. I want to, them to remember playing games in the backyard. I want them to remember feel like being held when they're crying Th those are the things that I want them to remember not the cool stuff I bought them or the places we went right you know? right right sometimes that's hard because we have like we have one kid that's like a real adventurer and she's like what the heck dad like we've never been to Hawaii or Mexico and I'm like uh-huh She's like, well, all my friends have been to Hawaii and Mexico. And I was like, no, they haven't. Like, come on. And literally, I I texted five of her best friend's parents. Oh, did you really? Oh, yeah, did I did. I was like, all right, <laughs> let's see. What's up? Ooh. Three out of five of them had to been to both places in the last year. Not just one or the other. Right. But both. Wow. And I was like, well, what the hell chance? <laughs> do we even had in life then because i have five of you and just like flights to hawaii alone for seven of us so no mm -hmm. plus the carbon footprint i just think it's unnecessary <laughs> it's great that's awesome that's awesome i mean we, we, we live know... in paradise so well yeah yeah i would agree with that right now yeah yeah i do agree with that and um how um in parenting differently, how do you think you're, what, what sort of ticks boxes for you? Different to society, different to how you were raised? Is it all of it different to how you thought you would parent? Different, different? Yeah, it's so many different. Actually, the first thing that pops up isn't even parenting differently than I was raised or mm -hmm. how I thought I would. It's actually that uh, the thing that popped up for me is that all, I parent all of my kids differently. That I have five kids and that the idea that you can parent five children the exact same way uh, is ridiculous and ludicrous. Like, let's just be real. Yeah. Um, it, it's setting everybody up for failure and it's setting them up to think that that equal is fair when that's not true, <clears throat> right? It's- mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you were speaking my language. I mean, I'm just yeah. like, yes, that's- And so, yeah, I just, I feel like, oh, it's not about even doing it differently than I had it done. It's just about like, I, you have to do it differently from one to the next, from one day to the next, from like it, it is, I would say that like my parenting is a living, breathing organism, you know, like it, it. it is like a good flubber. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's wonderful because I, it's, I didn't realize that until I became a parent that you cannot, you should not, you must not, <laughs> I don't know, I can say all of them, mm -hmm. parent the same. Because if we're talking about in conscious parenting, especially, which is just where you're at, is if we're talking about um, seeing them just as they are, how could it possibly be? You know, and I only had two, you've got five to negotiate yeah. through. But this idea that, you know, uh, one in particular, my, my son was way more fearful about things. My daughter used to say, oh, leave me home. And she's like, wait, leave me home. You go up. Whereas <laughs> my son was like, where are you going? Are you in the basement? You know, like this kind mm -hmm. of thing. So right away, 
you know, if we, like you're saying, if we want individuals and if we want to parent according to that child, not according to our own rules and, you know, like this is what we do today, everybody. You yeah, know? and if we want kids who are se securely attached, we need to let them attach in their style of attachment, mm -hmm. right? Like versus I'm sure you can attach exactly in this one way that I'm allowing you to. Um, you know, I think that as parents, I went into parenting thinking that like, oh, your job is to be the boss. Mm -hmm. And you're okay. like, yeah. oh, but actually your job is just to be the captain of the ship. There's all these <laughs> other people who know their parts of their roles better than you do. And you wouldn't mm -hmm. question them on that part because like, I don't know how the boiler works. That's not my job. Yeah. That's, that's not, mm -mm -mm. Yeah. like that's not a me spot. Mm -hmm. And so to think that one person should be superior and that other people should be inferior is also kind of ridiculous yeah i agree however i have been known to say whoa 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 i yell at you you don't yell at me <laughs> that's how this works that's a, something is wrong with this picture yeah. hang on <laughs> yeah i have been known to be like whoa 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 hold your roles everybody you've lost the dynamic of how this is supposed to work here Perfect, perfect. And then how do you and your wife handle um, differences? A lot parenting? of therapy. A lot of therapy, beautiful. Yeah, and we're yeah. a blended family. So yeah. oh, I, we yes. also have my uh, ex-husband who's part of the situation. And then our eldest's other dad, um, he lives in Australia. So he's around, oh. but he is just in a different country. Right. Um, <laughs> and so we're, we're always navigating sort of that in a more hands-on way than most i think um mm. we have done things differently in the fact that uh we sort of nest so on our property we have our main house and then we have a small cabin and chris okay. um does two weeks in the cabin and then two weeks back in calgary and then so he lives oh. on like shares the house does the whole thing like the cabins right. it's like a sleeping sort of cabin with a living room it's not like a mm -hmm. house or anything and so we do dinners together and like we're like we live together two weeks on yeah. two weeks off essentially maybe right now now that it's COVID, it's like two weeks on four weeks off mm -hmm. like, ugh. <laughs> but um but yeah so we that taking that navigating that is hard yeah um, so would, oh wow that's a lot of balls yeah. to juggle there like holy and it's navigating that it's navigating the fact that like i went from being a parent of four to being a parent of five when Catherine and I got married, but she went from being a parent of one to being a parent oh, of five. Yeah. And that's a much bigger jump. And the way that you parent one kid is entirely different than the way you parent five kids. You have mm -hmm. to you go to team, like zone defense, you rules are all ne like negotiable, but also like within reason, there has to be like some sort of continuity. There has to like, I, yeah. And it was, it, it made me become a better parent out of necessity right. because Impressive. my kids needed me to mm -hmm. not because mm -hmm. like i was doing such a good job all on my own it was like oh crap if i want to continue to give my kids the quality of life and the quality of parenting and attachment and all of those things that i have been while not divorced and in a single family home situation mm -hmm. uh i need to learn some skills and so we have a couple systems. One of them is that we have the number system, which mm -hmm. is basically we, um, if we disagree about something, we realize that like, oh, we were fighting about things that we disagreed about, but like, it was like, we have an opinion, but I don't really care. Right, okay. But like, because we had both been used to being the primary parent, oh, we yeah. were used to having say on those things. So we were just like arguing about things that really didn't matter. Right. Um, and so now when we start to argue, we're like, whoa, 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 what is this for you? And I'll be like, this is a four. And she'll be like, ooh, this is a seven for me. And I'll be like, oh, I like all that. right. Okay, well, why is it a seven? And she'll be like, because a four is enough that I might be interested in fighting about it. Maybe it's, <laughs> you know. Oh, and, uh, and is it a zero to 10? Yeah. yeah. So uh -huh. zero is like, if you force me to, I, I can't have an opinion on this if you force me to. I really right. had zero shits, okay? <laughs> One to two is like, if you I make like me that. choose, I will. Right. Three or four is like, I'm starting to have an opinion. Four is like, if I think about this enough, I may have a reason for having a, a better opinion. Like, 
you know when sometimes you're like off the top of your head you don't really care but right you think about it but then sometimes you're like wait a second actually I should care about that one hold on (laughs) if it's like four or higher I usually ponder for a second right Uh, but I'm like why is it a seven and it's like oh because of this and if it's a good reason for it to if it's any like valid good reason at all for her like it's a seven for me for this and I'm like oh yeah that's more important than my thing cool you do you babe go for it um wow that's impressive because why are you fighting over things that are like it's a two for me and it's an eight for her and like we would end up in these like big fights because it did it would like trigger something that was important to one of us Mm -hmm. the other one had no clue we were walking into that we just thought we were having a like well if you ask my opinion about it here i'll tell you what my opinion is i'm a great parent (laughs) i'm parent a and so i'm used to having my opinion heard about this thing Right. right Yeah. And we were fighting over things that we didn't need to fight over. And so now if it's like a seven or higher, we put a pin in it and we take it to therapy. Gosh, wow. wow. Yeah. And I love that you obviously are open about that, but I love that we're really realizing, you know, this, we need to find support, mm-hmm. you know, at two people yeah. can't be, or you've got three kind of mm-hmm. internet or four. <laughs> Yeah, and none of us maybe. can be objective, right? No. We're all, we all have our own and we, history and, you know and for traumas sure you're all, and triggers. Yeah, yeah, and you know, you all absolutely want the best for those children. Yeah, all right? of no us No one's just coming love them. from it, not wanting that. No, they're just trying to protect them in, in one way or another and something has gotten stuck. That's, yeah. and so when we're in those spots, we're like, great, that's a, all right, that's a therapy talk. You know, we mm-hmm. actually had therapy before this and we had something that we like had a fight two weeks ago about something and we had the ability to put a pin into it i was gonna say whoa <laughs> and still it be, was like still be nice in those two weeks <laughs> yeah it would be but it's just that like we knew that there was no other there's nothing else there there's mm-hmm. just we don't know how to navigate this this like why right fork in the road right mm-hmm. and so instead of being angry at each other and causing harm while trying to convince each other to go my way or her way mm-hmm we just pause it and we take it to somewhere before we have the fight where we have like someone who knows our situation and knows the nuance of it and like like we've had the same therapist for years and we just have a standing date with with them that it's just like it's preventative maintenance yeah yeah and and what what blows me away is your children you don't have to teach them this stuff they are learning through watching you Mm -hmm. that Okay, you don't, you I mean, can they, love somebody. They hear us talking the number system all the time. Oh, I love it. I love it. But I like that they even see that you are saying, listen, we, we go and have outside help to figure this out because mm-hmm. we don't always know. Yeah. Right? We're not these goddesses. And they <laughs> they have seen our um, therapist, right? Like, so mm-hmm. they know, they know our therapist. They know, they see their own therapist that actually is just happened to be supervised under our therapist just totally unrelated um and so it's this thing where like they don't see a therapist very much anymore because we're not really in flux anymore Mm -hmm. but you know when I when when Chris and I got divorced when I came out and transitioned all of those things are places where it wasn't their job to take care of me it was their job to have a place to have their own feelings that had nothing to do with me Mm. and So they went and saw a therapist, not because there was anything wrong, but because before they shoved something down and, Mm. you know, created that, that like scar, that crack in the foundation, that wound, like, let's just patch it up now before it's, you know, like. Yeah, giving them um, the space, yeah. And if we always just made it normal, Mm -hmm. then doesn't have that omen of like, oh, no. you see a therapist that much mm-hmm. sets the kiss of death, right? Like, right, right. You know, I did love in your um, video just another beautiful family that we'll put in the link so people can come find you. But yeah. there was something you said there about when they were asking, you know, how did the kids <clears throat> feel about um, being a, their mom and then being their dad? Mm-hmm. And what you said has just stuck with me. It was just so mind blowing is that they just see you. You're still you, yeah. right? That um, was just so phenomenal mm. that kids can see it from that side. Our oldest kid that night that we told them um, that I was transitioning, Catherine was like, so dad, huh? Big shocker, how you doing with that? And she was she was like 10 at the time. And 
And because because Catherine's that person that's like, yeah, let's make it normal. Like it's normal for you to feel conflicted about things. It's normal for you to have like a, a whole dichotomy, a whole like rich tapestry of feelings about mm-hmm. things. They're not supposed to be linear. Right. And so like, okay. how about that, huh? And adventure was just like, I mean, I have eyes. Like, I don't. Yeah. And we were just like, oh, right. Because when you're with your kids, your guard's not up anyway. You're not pretending you're someone you're not. They see you at 4 a.m. when they're puking and you're like, okay, here we are. They see you at when you're yelling at them because you're stressed out. They see you when you're happy and you're your best self. They see you when you're pretending to be your best self. Like they know you. They know you and they're little empaths in ways that we lose as we get older, right? Mm-hmm. We train that out of ourselves as we grow, that like yeah. our intuition isn't right, that, yeah. that we should just like smile and be happy anyway, mm-hmm. that we should, whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But they haven't lost that yet. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so they know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, how do you come about when you do mess up? How do you mm. deal? Well, I'm just assuming. Perhaps you do. Oh, I do. All okay. The time. <laughs> okay. I, I'm, I might be projecting. Surely yeah. you mess up at some point, Nick. No. If mm. you, when you mess up, this is a big topic that I often deal with clients as well. When you mess up, how do you deal with that? Firstly, with yourself, with guilt, shame. I'm awful. And then, how do you repair? Like, how? how what, what do you? What do you do? You got tips on that? Yeah. So. I am a shamer. Um, I, you know, I think that most people come into the category of blamer or shamer, right? You like, okay, knock yeah. some, like a, a glass of milk gets knocked over, right? And you're right. like, one person is like, oh my goodness, I can't believe that that I I must have poured the milk wrong. The glasses probably are they're they're like not not balanced. I bought terrible glasses. I'm sorry, <laughs> it's my fault, right? And then right. the other person is like. Can you believe this freaking milk, this stupid milk? Who poured this? Why would it even be there, right? Like at our, in hyperbole, we are one or the other. Right, okay. Very few of us are like, oh, the milk did what the milk wanted to do. Things happen. (laughs) And if we are, we're like that as our best selves, not our worst selves, which we all have moments of our worst selves. And so, um. For me, I am more of a shamer, so I will always put it on me first. Yeah. So I, um, I feel like I don't have to apologize as often for anything other than being like, I was embarrassed and I got ashamed of myself and then I didn't want to talk about it. So I got short and grouchy and angry and I'm sorry, but like it had nothing to do with you. It was just right. that I got embarrassed. Right, like I, I say that a lot. Mm -hmm. Uh, I also say things like, "I'm really sorry for yelling. I felt like no one was hearing me, and the only way that you would stop and listen to me is if I yelled. But I'm really sorry. I shouldn't have. I'm gonna try not to yell more. Do you think you could try and listen a little bit when I asked the first time? But I do. I do both a lot of repair but I don't ever I because I do it so often I don't ever have to do really big ones Mm -hmm. I guess if that makes sense yeah yeah totally I think before because I wasn't always this great of a parent shocker um before I would often have to do more like larger repairs like I would really I would I would like hold it all in 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 and then lose my shit right and then that was more me yeah yeah, and I would have to be like, so sorry, everybody. I have to apologize for three days now because that was, whew. Yeah. Uh, and now I find that I am allowing myself to feel my feelings and I'm allowing myself to accept that they just are what they are and that mm-hmm. they are that way for a reason. Right. Um, and to have some grace with myself. That is like a new thing. And it's just because I do a really a lot of therapy. Yeah. Right? I am I am really in a like, I am that person who's very um, like self-discovery is king, is queen. Is yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. I, 
I am always wanting to be better. It drives Catherine nuts. Yes. She says things. I say things like, do you think at the end of the day you could give me like a husband report card? And she is like, no, no, I'm not going to do that. That's a terrible idea. Damn it. Um, it's super obnoxious. It sounds like a cool thing, but it's not. Um, so awful. It's awful, right? So, but I... I can recognize that that is also my insecure attachment. That's my codependency. That's my being like, are we okay? Am I doing a good enough job? Is mm -hmm. every, do I need to be better? And right. I'm working really hard to have to understand that like, even if I didn't do a good job that I'm okay anyway. Yes. And back to the beginning of like, it, it is helping me, my kids are helping me see that. Right. because there's so many times where they're like they also are upset that they've done the wrong thing or they and they're like i'm just the worst and and i get to be the person that's like no you just made a bad choice like or you just had a mistake or you just yeah like that doesn't def one moment in your life doesn't define you no matter where you are yeah and yeah. so this is the this is the catalyst to change this is the stuff mm -hmm. that i want to hallelujah yeah. <laughs> you know like i just feel that this is the catalyst for change because your children are being raised by these real human things, right? Like we're, we're, I mean, not raised by human things, but raised mean, by though. yeah, right? Yeah, that sounded yeah. really weird. Mm -hmm. By human things. Um, I mean, <laughs> I, my my body worker often says this thing that maybe isn't appropriate for your podcast, but I'm going to say it anyway. Go she it. says, I mean, yeah, but look at our parents; they were really raw dogging it. Because, like, they didn't have therapy. They didn't have yeah. mom's books, groups Googles. that were, yeah. right? Like, think of what parenting was like in the 80s when you, all of a sudden, women had to work more often than not. Mm -hmm. And kids were, like, going, like, turnkey. They'd come home and make their own dinner out of a craft. Like, that's when craft dinner came to, like, that's right. the late that's 80s right. and 90s. That's, you know, that's... Yeah this generation of like our parents were really they were broken people their parents were in vietnam they were draft dodgers and things like that they're broken and then they had kids they did not have any yeah. skills on how to raise the village was completely gone yeah and nothing had replaced it yet mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. fully agree fully, you know? fully and so agree. she's always like they were really raw dogging it <laughs> what do you expect right like yeah yeah you know? oh it's so true but the, the what's scary is to me there's still a lot of people still going based on what they feel they have been told they have to parent right that this is still the way yeah. whereas you you your empathy you're showing yourself gets transmitted to them mm -hmm. right it just, yeah. you don't have to say now we're always going to be kind to each other and then they see mm -hmm. you be mean to somebody yeah. you know like you you're just living it I think the biggest thing that I have learned in all of this is to stay tender. That's the like, that's the word that comes is yeah. that, uh, and it's a, it's been hard for me in my transition, mm -hmm. it, like going from, from being assigned female at birth to like the, the hormone transition and like mm -hmm. all of a sudden when you have testosterone after you've never had that in your body like that, there's a little bit of a, a learning curve to that and stabilizing your mood and stabilizing like uh in the way the same like i don't cry anymore not because i choose not to cry but because okay. my body takes sadness and instantly changes it to rage wow that's interesting and so i that's my experience that just doesn't mm -hmm. mean that's everyone's experience but right. in the same way that that i used to feel sad i now am angry and so it caused me to have to like look at that and look at like, oh, I don't want to be that toxic masculine dad who's yelling at everybody all the time because I can't get my shit together, right? Mm -hmm. And so the thing that I have found is to lean more into my tenderness. And it means leaning into my like more feminine energy, mm -hmm. but we're supposed to be a balance of that anyway. Yeah. And we've sort of gotten that all, all messed up lately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. So. Awesome. Same so let's, of. yeah, <laughs> so, uh, let's just the last part, last couple of bits. Um, what's been the hardest part of parenting for you? The hardest part of parenting for me is the 
discomfort of not being willing to or able to fix everything for my kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That I, more than anything, want them to never experience discomfort. I don't want them to be sad. I don't want them to have, have heartbreak. I don't want them, like, I want them to have all the things. I don't want them ever to feel less than. Right. But then at the same time, to take away all of their, their obstacles creates less than kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, and mm-hmm. so it's this balance of being capable of the discomfort of conflict, being capable of the discomfort of the like doing the right thing, even though it's the harder parenting move, and even though oh, it's yeah. the like short term pain, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, I think the other thing has been knowing when to shut the hell up because it's just not my business and it doesn't matter. <sighs> Right. And the yes. perfectionist in me really, uh, I am an Enneagram too, and I lean hard into my perfectionism. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I want to help them be perfect too. Right. Right. That is, yeah. And the very final one if you could talk to your younger self, first time parent, first baby, second baby. What words of wisdom would you share with yourself? I would definitely share the like, the don't care so much about the ironing and the laundry and care more about holding on to your identity. Mm. Right? I lost so much of my identity becoming their parent. Mm -hmm. And the spot where I got healthy and happy again is when I gained my identity. I don't know that I needed to give it up to begin with. Wow. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nick, for being here. Super, super appreciate this. What an enlightening conversation. And for those watching or listening, I will have all of Nick's details, how you can reach out to him, how you can find him, and definitely to watch it. That's amazing. Just another beautiful family movie as well. And uh, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you.